Welcome to our video devotional for today, Monday, April the 18th, 2022. I'd like to read out of uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22 and verse 27. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In verse 27, so they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Throughout uh, the course of ministry in my life, I, I frequently stated that believers are to be in the blessing business, not the cursing business. Now, I base that on a couple of facts in, in the history of the word of God. First, it was the duty of the high priest to pronounce this prayer called the Berkat Kohanim. He was to pronounce this Berkat Kohanim prayer of blessing over the children of Israel. And every morning after the sacrifice at the temple, he was to pronounce this blessing, the high priest was. And it was to be stated only by the high priest. As we move forward into the New Testament, we come to the book of Revelation, the very last book. It says in, in Revelation 1, 5, and 6 that uh, Jesus has made us to be a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God. And because of that, because we've been made a kingdom of priests and our high priest is Jesus, we are, as his representatives here on this planet, to do what Jesus would do if he were here. We are to be a people of blessing. And so over the course of this week, we're going to talk about this process of blessing. In fact, I could tell you clearly, the Bible in its entire uh, teaching is about blessing. It's about that uh, cord of red crimson that runs through the blood of Jesus Christ to take the curse of, of sin away from man and, and bless him with the gift of eternal life. It may be unnoticed by the casual reader, that the requirement of God, that blessing will only come to the obedient and faithful. However, what probably most priests, that would be believers, have not understood is that we're to pronounce blessing over all people. It is God and that individual who determines whether that blessing falls and abides. Did you catch that? See, we're to pronounce the blessing. But only God and the person who we're speaking to can determine whether that blessing will fall and abide upon them. In James chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, it talks about blessing and cursing should not proceed out of the same mouth. We shouldn't curse with the same mouth that we're blessing with. In other words, don't do them both. And it's a great joy for me today to share this great biblical principle in hope that blessing will dominate our conversation and our lifestyle. Now, in the Old Testament, according to the sages, the obligation to bless the people with love comes from out of our heart, from the fullness of our heart and the sincerity of our heart, a desire to bless. Not half-spoken, half-hearted, or insincere, but really, I want God to bless you. Now, I want you to think about that with people that, aren't living for God right now that are related to you and they're doing some horrible things. Do you want them to be blessed or cursed? You know what's going to happen if they don't turn from their sin. They're going to fall into the curse of God, be separated from God forever. Do you want that? I don't want that. And so let's bless them and then let's pray God will cause them to come into obedience to his word so they can receive the blessing. Now there's three parts to this blessing. I've read it to you already out of Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. The first part is the Lord bless and keep you. The first part is imparting God's blessing and protection. Now, when I say the Lord bless and keep you, I'm saying may the Lord invoke his blessings and protection from evil forces and all that's adverse to one's welfare in life. <laughs> bless in the Greek is barak. And it means uh, as a benefit. May God give you a benefit. 
It conveys the idea of God's presence actively being brought into a person's life, his love being brought into a person's life, uh, his love being brought into their environment. Keep is the word shamar in the Greek, and it, it means uh, to guard. The Lord guard you. The Lord protect you. The Lord attend to you and put a hedge around your life. Let me let me read Psalm 71 in, in the first six verses because it speaks this. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong habitation to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from my birth, for you are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall continually be of you. Well, that's powerful, isn't it? God keeps us. Well, some of you have read through Psalm 91 many times, but let me, let me just repeat the last verses of that, Psalm 91, beginning at verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high your habitation, no evil shall befall you. Hear God keeping you? Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, here we are. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord impart all of his protection upon you and guard over you. And may you belong to him. Oh, Father, may we be that kind of people who pour out blessing, who speak the truth, tell people what could be the result if they don't turn to God, but bless them so if they're willing, they can come under that blessing. Oh, thank you, Lord. Change each of our hearts, Lord, so that we might reflect that in the world we live in. Thank you for that. I praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's, let's walk this out. Let's, let's be the people of blessing God's called us to be. Put that over the environment by the words of your mouth, over the people you love, and those who even are your enemies. Have a great day.